Welcome to the Weasley Update. I am Aiden Weiss. I am ripped and ready to ramble. This is episode 10. What? Oh my god, I am so pumped about this. I am recording it on April 14th of 2020. I just took a really ridiculous uh, Keef bowl out of my bong to celebrate the 10th episode because this was one of my 2020 goals. So... I'm really pumped to finally be recording this. Fortunately, I'm probably going to cut it a little bit short just because I'm trying to get on some sort of a regular sleeping schedule. Now that school has started again, I am uh, I'm excited to just delve into this quarter. And honestly, it hasn't been as bad a transition as uh, I had previously anticipated. Like with this whole quarter being online and shit, I was definitely worried about it, but... Um, what am I, like, a week in, barely? This is week, oh god. I'm just, uh, I'm just doing my best to keep my head down and stay focused, but over the extended break, I was also doing my best to, uh, stay disciplined. Um, you know, so that when school came around, I, I wouldn't be falling behind it's gonna be a pretty hard quarter but i look forward to the challenge oh, sounds like i'm reading that off of a card um i downloaded this fucking app called elevate per uh my dad's request and I, i'm not fucking sponsored by them or anything i don't think anyone's gonna sponsor this shit but uh, it's just this brain training app. It's just got brain games. So every day, it's got like a different program for you. Of three games, and then there's a paid for version. Uh, it's like a subscription. I don't know how much it is. I just use the free one. And every day, play three of those games. It's usually running through just like math, uh, different facets of writing, and all sorts of shit. So every day, I'm like at least to a small extent, uh, stimulating all the important parts of my brain. As I said last time, I also started reading more, because I never, I never really read. But it's actually funny, I didn't realize how much I read until the, this morning, because uh, my parents are getting rid of a bunch of books, and they had all the Percy Jas Jackson books out there, which were mine, and I didn't read all of them. But I, I don't know, I know I at least read the first one. Um, but I feel like I read more, because I had all of them. But I know for a fact I read all the Spiderwick Chronicle books, too. Which is what, uh, another thing that they were selling. They made a movie out of that with, I don't know the guy's name, but he ended up playing Norman Bates in Bates Motel. Which was a show that I watched for the first season, but I was into Looking back on it, is that is the mom in that? The woman from The Conjuring? I think it is. I can't believe I didn't put that together until now. Well, like I said, I like that show, but I just stopped watching it after the second or after the first season. I I have no idea why. People continued to uh, to check it out. It's like Walking Dead. Like I was pretty into that at the beginning. Went to Comic Con, got my picture taken with a couple of the the actors. I, w I was into it, um, but it just got so boring every season, and then I'd stop watching, and then something super crazy would happen to draw me back in. So a after so much time, I just stopped. Like I was like, you know, and I'm I'm not getting roped back in, and I'm sleeping one night actually in what is now the guest bedroom that I'm recording this in right now. It's funny how full circle that is and I could hear my parents watching the next episode it was like they were at the jail or something spoiler alert they were at the fucking jail or something and I was just hearing tanks go off and shit while the, they were fighting the governor and I was like I'm not I'm not going back in and I never did no matter how tempting the sounds of the tanks were but um I definitely don't shit on that show. Uh, my my dad's still into it. My buddy called me the other day to tell me that Better Call Saul is officially better than Breaking Bad. Um but my dad disagrees. I will have to uh I'll have to see for myself. That's going to be interesting. I don't know. I haven't been watching anything. 
like I said, I've been trying to stay disciplined, keeping my schedule full. You know how hard it is for me just to get through 25 pages a day? That's all I want right now. I want to read 10 pages of Lord of the Rings, um, 10 pages of uh, uh, Stephen King on writing, and 5 pages of this mixing book that my grandpa just fucking got me. Uh, and that's honestly pretty fucking hard for me to get through. It's not like I'm a shitty reader or anything. It's just like finding the time to do that. Lord of the Rings is one case because it's a fucking... Oh my god, the text is tiny and the, the pages are just dense. But, you know, it's it's pretty easy to escape into. But I definitely every day like only hit those 25 page margins. I just started the 25 page thing today too. Uh, up until yesterday it was just 20 pages but you know I fucking did it today I plan on doing it tomorrow I'm trying to get a streak going it shouldn't be that like reading shouldn't be like that you know I should be wanting to do it all the time so I've, I've got a bunch of fucking books lined up so as soon as I finish you know one I'm fucking replacing it with another most of them are writing books actually if I look at my shelf but, oh shit if I look at my shelf and see what I have, I'll read it to you in order. Most of these are my parents. Lord of the Rings, Stephen King on writing, step-by-step -step mixing, stealing fire from the gods, the writer's journey, the writer's idea book, Lou Hunter's screenwriting 404, and the artist's way. And I'm not saying that to sound like a fucking smarty, because who fucking knows if I'll get through all those? Who knows if I'll get through a quarter of them? All I know right now is I'm trying to read 25 pages a day. And if all goes according to plan, like I said, once one of these books is up, whichever comes up first is replaced by then. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know which one I'll start with after that. I'll have to consult my dad, because like I said, there he is. Oh, you know what else is new? We got a new fucking cat. Holy shit. At my family's house. Her name is Meep. She's my mom's cat, and she's the sweetest little kitten. She's this little gray thing. Oh, my God. Um, our other cat does not share our enthusiasm, to say the least. He's he's pretty upset. You know, if, uh, if Meep is in her cage, Scrump will go up and fucking hiss at her. He's big. He's a... Scrump is a big fucking boy, and he is, my, my buddy Derek described it best, he is the most receptive animal to human touch that I've ever fucking seen. It is unreal. I love that thing so much. But he's pretty salty with us. Like, he, he actually is, like, you know, sort of less cuddly now. Almost like he's taking a stand. It's, it's ridiculous. All except with Ryder. He just sleeps in Ryder's room at the end of the night, which is cool. He can fucking, you know, he can do his thing. They'll adjust. I, I wonder how big she'll get, because she's just so fucking tiny. We named her, again, you know, this is tradition in the Weiss family, if I haven't mentioned it, mentioned it before. All of our pets are named after fucking Disney animals. Or not Disney animals, just Disney characters. I'm close to the window. So, that, uh... That includes um, Jasmine, Qua. Uh, oh god, Jasmine, Ka is my snake. Meep was a character on Phineas and Ferb. If you don't know who Ka is, I should. I guess I should explain that. That's uh, a Jungle Book character. It's a snake. Meep is a alien character from Phineas and Ferb that just says Meep until basically it gets a mustache and then talks with a really sophisticated voice um it's really fucking funny and we uh you know she just looked like a meep the other op option was yzma like from emperor's new groove but we could not look at that kitten and think yzma so meep it is and we could not have picked a better name because she meeps it's fucking hilarious she is so goddamn cute and so playful but still so cuddly i'm really happy that she's adjusting though. Oh, god damn, I got this candle burning next to me. I asked my mom if I could use a fucking candle so my room doesn't smell so cushy. Just out of, uh, you know, 
show respect because it's it's the guest bedroom and this shit's pretty strong. It just said iced snowberries is what it is. Hmm. It's honestly invading my nostrils, but it's better than the scent of weed, I guess. You know what fucking movies I just love? Pirates of the Caribbean. I just rewatched the second and third one over the course of the last three days, three or four days, just because I couldn't, like, find the time to sit down and watch one all the way through. But, um... Really fucking solid movies. Anyone who knows me knows how much I fucking love those movies. And especially, like I said, I'm listening to that Hans Zimmer, or watching, rather, that Hans Zimmer masterclass. And so, uh, it's definitely, like, prompted me to go back and watch the movies again, sort of, with what I learned about the process of making the music from those in mind. Um, and dude, I just love those movies so fucking much. Uh, I also just love the ride so fucking much at Disneyland. There was a tradition for a long time that every time we went to Disneyland, the first ride we went on was Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know why we started that, because I started going to Disneyland when I was really young, like a, a baby, um, because I'm so privileged and my parents are so awesome. Uh, so... I have no idea why that started or when it started, but my whole my whole childhood that was the deal. And then they made a movie about it. When when did that first one come out? I'm gonna guess 2004. Let's look this up. Pirates. Two thousand three. Okay, so I was four years old when the first one came out. So, I think at that point, oh god, I had actually probably gone to Disneyland like three or four times in my life, which is still, you know, I was really young, like I'm not saying I remember that, but I do remember after they, because, you know, um, a not so well-known secret about that ride is that, you know, it, it produced the movie, they made a movie based off the ride. And then people would start going on the ride, and they were like, why don't they have the characters like Jack Sparrow that the ride is based on? So then they felt like they needed to add the characters, so they did a huge innovation and put Jack Sparrow in a, a bunch of times, and uh, and put Barbosa in it, and they, had, they, they did a bunch of shit, added some Davy Jones shit, it was really cool. And I remember leading up to a Disneyland trip after they had you know, done that massive renovation, we, uh, my mom and I were watching a video of it on YouTube, and we were so fucking pumped, my parents got us so hyped for those shits, I remember when my sister and I were, were little, uh, we'd, like, get on the Disneyland website, and you could go through the ride section, <coughs> excuse me, you could go through the ride section, and, like, uh, uh, there'd be a uh, very stylistic, I don't know, 15 to 30 second video to accompany each ride. And we would just fucking scroll through the page and look at, look at every video. So, so awesome. As you can tell, I've got some really, really awesome parents. I'm super appreciative. It was, oh God. It was always like the best too when my fucking aunt and uncle and cousins could come. That was, oh. I was always made for great trips. This last trip, I know I've talked about it. They were able to come and my fucking grandma. That used to be the deal, too. We used to go for like eight or nine days at a time. It would, Like I said, my parents are really, really, really fucking awesome. And uh, I remember one day in particular. It was... Uh, oh, God, how old was I? I don't know. Probably five or six. I, yeah, look, five or six. I, I, I don't think I could be any older than six. Anyways, it, it doesn't really matter. It was just a really fucking bright, sunny, sunny day, and they were over, uh, my aunt and uncle and my fucking cousins, and they were over, and we were playing some, like, carnival game on the Wii or something, and they just paused it at one point. My uncle was like, yeah, we're going to Disneyland with you. 
and it was just such it was like two days before the trip you know and like his kids had no idea and it was just so fucking cool it was so awesome and i remember that my mom like before that uh my mom was checking the weather for what what it was going to be like during the trip and she was on the phone with my aunt and i remember my mom reading it off and my aunt being really excited on the other end of the phone and i was like oh she's really pumped for us it was so so fucking cool and that was an awesome fucking trip dude it, when you're that age my my mom has always said uh like that's a really good age to take you because you're old enough to remember it but it's still like super magical and you know i go all the time i know all the fucking ins and outs and the secrets dude maybe that's why i, I appreciate it so much but it's still very very magical i fucking love that shit dude it's just so awesome going with the fucking fam. They just always do it right. You know, I did fucking Six Flags with my buddy. I'm, st I'm staring at a fucking photo from that. What was that ride called? The X2. See, what was cool about um, uh, Six Flags is that the roller coasters were really crazy. You know, it wasn't like themed very authentically. That's what Disneyland does really well. But the rides were fucking insane. Actually, after... Oh, I don't know how many hours of drive. We just hucked it there in basically one shot. We only slept for, I think, a 20-minute period of time. Like, we just left... Six one night. Um, from Issaquah, Washington. Fucking hucked it down to Six Flags. We went and checked in on our hotel, which took four fucking ever. They had to, like, switch us to a different room because the keys weren't working. And then, like, the, it was so fucked up. Um, so that took forever. And then we fucking, you know, went, stood in line, did this first ride. And I'm, I'm doing this shit. And for the first time in my life, I get tunnel vision. I'm so like, what the fuck? And I feel like shit we get off the ride and i i just feel like i'm fucking drunk and derek describes experiencing the exact same fucking thing and i you know i think it was just because that was a really intense ride and we were doing it after fucking hucking it that that fucking long with no sleep and just in the blazing sun dehydrated but um or the simpler conclusion is that i'm just a little bitch ass and so is he that's probably more likely i guess but it, it was fucking crazy nonetheless and we after that we just went back to the hotel and then the, the next day we did this x2 shit which was i don't even know how to describe it you're like imagine the track of a roller because a traditional roller coaster the carts are hovering right above the track but imagine that the carts are off to the side and they spin like there's two carts off to the left and and two carts off to the right and they fucking spin while it's going and this shit was just so crazy and i didn't know that it took our picture and i didn't want to spend any money but i definitely needed to get it and i'm so glad that i fucking have it what a what a ride man uh, other than that i i it wasn't very memorable. I guess other than the fact that I <laughs> I got caught sneaking my dad pen in and then <laughs> and then I almost got caught the next day. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so the first day <laughs> this is so bad. So so the first day I'm just trying to walk through with my dad pen in a headphone case. It worked at Disneyland. <coughs> Jesus. Okay. I'm really giving my, my strategy away here. So I'm trying to go through with a headphone case. And uh, and I think it's just going to work. Take it out of my pocket. Put it in the bin. Walk through all confidently. And the dude starts unzipping this shit. And he grabs the cartridge out of it. And holds it up into the sun. Oh, it was so bad. And, uh, and D-Man just sort of like skedaddles out of there and then this dude calls over a cop <laughs> like a, 
Oh god, that was so bad. Like, not it, not like a security guard, like a cop. And uh, and he's like looking at this shit. He's like, "Where'd you get this?" He he, he asked how old I was, and I was like, "Twenty one." <laughs> this was so bad. He was like, "Show me your ID." I was just like, "Fuck me." So uh, he took it. He was he called me a liar. <laughs> and um he basically like went through the motions, how'd you get it? Got it from my dad. That's what I said. You know, and he he was uh, pretty pissed about that, but then he was he gave it back to me and he was like, You can't bring this in the park. Here you go. And I was like, Oh, okay, thanks man and I just ran it back to the car. Ran back inside, it was good. Next day we think, all right, we'll put it in a sandwich. We'll put it in a Ziploc bag in a sandwich. Because at Disneyland, this is what I'm used to, they just let you bring in your own food and drink. So I'm going through this shit. Um, <laughs> as soon as we get up to the line, we, we hear, uh, and remember, no outside food or drink in the park. And I was just like, Again, Derek starts distancing himself. So I'm like, fuck it. Here we go. Just give the dude my backpack. He opens it up. And there's a ton of snacks in there, not just a sandwich. He's like, what's with the food? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm gonna get hungry. And, uh, and he was like, well, you can't have any outside food or drink in the park. And here's the thing. When we were evaluating whether or not that, that goddamn sandwich looked good, the smuggle sandwich we were like well, well it's not like he's gonna hold it and this dude pulls the fucking sandwich out <coughs> and it's holding it while he's talking to us and I'm just like oh my god and he's like you can either take it outside and eat it or throw it away and there's a garbage can like 15 feet off to the left behind him and I'm like I, I like don't know what to do and I'm like alright I'll just I'll just throw it away and I grab it throw it in the bag and just like beeline towards that fucking garbage and when I got there I started taking out a handful of snacks and I threw them in the garbage and then I zipped my bag back up kept going it was awesome the only shitty part of that is that I could not find a place to wash my hands after I got it out of the PB&J sandwich that was a pain in my fucking ass but all said and done, that was a good trip. I had a really good time. Um, you know what else I've been having a fucking blast doing? I have these like stupid fucking smokes smoke sessions with my cousin via Snapchat story. And it is so fucking fun. I don't know how it started, but when it did, people thought that we were beefing. Like, I guess who didn't know we were related. Like people would hit me up and be like, dude, what's the deal with you and Connor? It's like, uh, I don't know what the fuck do you mean? So, it died down at one point, but we're going strong right now. These smoke sessions are awesome. It's been so fucking fun. God damn, you, you know all that has been on my mind recently is just more tattoos. And I have wanted tattoos for a long time. I've been planning to sleeve since I was 12. And like, oh, in my parents warned me that once you got one it was going to be like an addiction and dude I thought I was like yeah I get it but I did not get it I just have this one and I cannot wait to get more god damn I just want something for my snake so bad oh god who's hitting me up no 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 looking at my phone that's bad to do on a fucking cast yeah, it's been a, it's been a relatively low key quarantine. <laughs> As you can tell, I've just been like watching Pirates of the Caribbean and fucking reading. It's been good, but uh, for the sake of my sleep, I'm gonna have to cut this one short. Like I said earlier, but fucking happy tenth. I will see you on the eleventh. We're in the double digits, baby.